Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. A big day for news in relation to Celtic. A lot to actually cover today. Um, I feel like I don't even know where to start. We've got news in the transfer front that's very exciting. We've also got news in relation to the future of our club and its staffing. So there's quite a lot to run through today. Some statements to read through, some opinion to give in response to each statement. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into today's video and talk about what is a very exciting day uh, in terms of Celtic news. And before we go any further with the video, as I always ask, if you could please go down below and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy the content in this channel and you're looking for more updates as the summer goes on, then hopefully I will be here to update you. So if you could drop down below, hit subscribe, it would be much appreciated. But yes, uh, hit the like button as well. Let's get on with uh, talking about this influx of news. So let's walk chronologically here. Let's go from the first piece of news to break to the most latest piece of news to break. Um, we're going to start with news that came out yesterday in regards to a new staff appointment at Celtic Park, something that was kind of out the blue. There was no rumours leading up to this. There was no tabloid newspapers informing us of a, an appointment coming soon. But Celtic have appointed a new head of first team scouting and recruitment and a name that sounds very, very familiar. Um, does the second name Lowell ring a bell to anyone? Celtic released a statement via the club's website yesterday to inform us that Celtic are pleased to announce the appointment of Mark Lowell as head of first team recruitment and scouting. Mark joined Celtic from his position as head of CFG scouting and recruitment within the City Football Group's global structure, having spent the last 10 years there. Mark, who will join the club in readiness for the summer transfer window, previously worked closely with Celtic manager Ange Postecoglou on scouting and recruitment throughout Ange's time as manager of Yokohama F. Marinos. So, news that really came out of nowhere yesterday. Um, we've obviously been talking about the staffing at Celtic for quite a while now, since before even Ange Postecoglou came in. We were saying that Celtic had to go out and they had to find maybe a director of football. They had to appoint someone to take the role of Nick Hammond in the recruitment sort of area. We just knew that there had to be something that would happen. And, and it's came a little bit later than probably expected it, but it has dropped. We've finally got something here to react to. And as expected, it has caused a very 50-50 reaction um, of the Celtic supporters. Why? Well, it's quite simple. It's, it's that name, isn't it? Lawwell. If you haven't put two and two together yet, they are related. Old Pete Pistol Pete. Peter Lawwell. Um, it's not just any old relation. It is the product of his semen. <laughs> as Vince McMahon would put it, it is his own flesh and blood, his son, Mark Lawwell, who is now going to be head of our first team scouting and recruitment. Me, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, and the product of my semen, it's my son Shay. It's just like Vince McMahon though, isn't it? This whole situation, just, you know, Peter Law, one day, Vince McMahon will leave. You're like, oh, we're finally getting rid of the McMahons. They're gone, they're gone. No, 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 we have a son. We have a daughter, we have someone with the second name Lawwell, just like McMahon at the WWE, that will be at this club to have a firm grip on the testicles. Yes, that's it, another Lawwell is here. No, in, in, in all seriousness, I'll give my, my proper opinion to this appointment. Um, I'm not outraged at all, which may surprise you. It, you might be stunned, because usually I come on this channel to cry about everything that happens in the back back room and the behind the scenes at Celtic, that's, I think, one of the things that I've become famous for in this channel, I'm never fucking happy <laughs> when it comes to what happens behind the scenes at Celtic, um, and also, I think, obviously, with how last season went down and how vocal I was on my channel about wanting to see Peter Law leave the club and etc, etc, I think a lot of people will probably be clicking on this video to hear me complaining about the appointment of his son in this role, but in fact, I'm not at all, I'm not at all outraged, um, that might disappoint you, I'm not at all overly critical or negatively critical. In fact, I'm actually thinking that this is a very smart and probably good appointment for the club. Um, I've seen a lot of people giving it the the opinion of nepotism. A lot of people are disappointed, they think it's lazy work from Celtic, and, and ultimately they think the only reason that he's got himself the job at Celtic is because he is the son of Peter Law, which is all well and fine, and I, I honestly understand that opinion, because I think, you know, 
in most other occasions, I, I would probably agree. But I think this is completely different. This is someone who's clearly experienced in the role that he's joining Celtic in. And not just anywhere, but within the City Football Group. A very, very good and well-run organisation. Um, in terms of footballing. You know, I'm not going to get into my political opinions on the City Group and my just overall fan opinions of the City Group because, you know me, I don't like Man City, but um, in terms of how football-related matters run, you probably can't work at a better organisation in modern football. We have seen the, the, the catastrophically good rise of Manchester City over the past decade, and now there are other teams across the globe in that City group. You look at New York City, who won the MLS last season. You look, obviously, down in Australia, who have their side down there as well, and I think there's a couple more over the globe. And, of course, Yokohama, F. Marinos, where Ange Postacoglu worked in Japan. This is a very well-run organisation in which someone's held a very good role for the past 10 years. He's not coming in with no experience in what he's doing. He's not coming in out of luck. He's coming in because he's worked hard. And yes, there probably is an advantage because Peter Law is his father. But at the end of the day, he does this work. Um, and to have a role within that city group for a decade must mean that he's pretty good at his work. I also think this is vastly different as well for another reason. This isn't a boardroom role that his son is walking into here it's not like you know obviously I, I, I understand why so many people get annoyed at Dermot Desmond's son being on the board because that's you know a big role that's that's a role that directly is going to have a long a, a effect on this club in terms of how we run and where we move and how we try and turn ourselves into a more sort of modernized club but this is a footballing role um, which also has a big impact on how we move forward as a club. Of course, he's in charge of our first team scouting, for God's sake. This this could have impacts on us for, for years to come, but it's football-related. It's not in the boardroom. And I feel like, you know, if we were to appoint Peter Law's son to a position of power in the suits and the higher-ups, then, yeah, there would be a room for outrage there because he wouldn't be qualified in that role. But this guy is qualified for this footballing role that he's walked into. He's walking in as a scout. Um, to a job as the, the head of first team scouting and hopefully it goes well I think we've got to remember and I've seen a couple of articles so far of people who are far on the other side from me people who are very very against this appointment and a lot of people are jumping to the conclusion and I'm not going to jump to the opposite conclusion but a lot of people are jumping to the conclusion that this has been lazy of Celtic that it has been once again another appointment made when we've not followed procedure and such I don't necessarily agree with that either. I'd imagine that there was a process in place here, a procedure in place, which probably would have involved the manager firsthand. And it helps because Ange Postacoglu has worked with Mark Law as well. So I think that there probably has been a process in which the manager has had a very hefty opinion uh, on the situation and, and that's probably influenced the appointment of who got this this, this job. So I, I don't really necessarily agree with that. Let's look at Ange Postacoglu's comments. He also spoke in this statement. He said, I was very keen for Mark to join the club and clearly I am delighted that he has accepted this important role and that we have been able to bring him to Celtic. Mark Mark is someone who I worked with closely throughout my four years at Marinos, through which time we developed great trust and an excellent working relationship. He knows the way I like to work, the way my teams play, and the particular player profile in which this requires. And judging off what Ange has said there, if he's good enough for Ange, he's good enough for me. Ange sounds delighted. Now, I know a lot of people when it comes to these statements just think that things are said and just off the cuff and they don't really mean them. It's just to beef out statements, etc. But I think if they've worked together for so, they worked together for four years, they clearly have a good relationship here and Ange wouldn't be saying that for the press. He wouldn't be saying that for no reason. As I said, I think Ange has probably had a very influential say in, in Mark getting the job here. And if this is a guy that Ange thinks will do well and already has experience in working with him to make this an easier process, I am all for it. Call me crazy, but I don't really care about his second name. And also, ultimately, I just hope he does well at the job. We, we understand what first team scouting and recruitment means. He's going to be in charge of um, bringing players in um, over however long he stays at the club now. He's going to be the head man in, in scouting and recruitment. Um, let's hope that he does a better job than the last guy. Cough, cough, Nick Hammond. Um, I know Nick Hammond made a couple of good signings, but there was a lot of garbage to say the least, a lot of garbage. So, yeah, let's let's hope he does a good job at this. I'm excited to see what happens and bring on the summer transfer window and all the rumours that come alongside it.
And the second big, as I said, it's a big day for stories, and this is one that would normally take the headlines when it comes to Celtic, and it would be the first thing on the agenda, but we're saving it for the end here. We have got extremely good and extremely positive news about none other than Jota and his future as a Celtic player. Now, unless you have been sleeping under a rock this morning, or you've just awoken, um, you might not have heard, but you should have heard. Things are looking good. There has been some very positive uh, things wrote in both the Portuguese and Scottish media in regards to the future of him and where he will be playing next season. And when I say positive, I mean very fucking positive. Right, going to have to excuse me. I'm going to try and get through this with the kind of broken translation that I have and also with the pronunciation of the, 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 the publication itself. But the news was broke this morning, according to the journal De Noticias, Notic Noticias, I think it may be Noticias, uh, they said, and this is a rough translation, by the way, I've tried my best via Google Translate to get this into English, understandable English. So this is what they had to say from the range of athletes at Benfica. It's already known that two players, Jota and Florentino, will have different destinations. The winger, star of Celtic, should stay at the Scottish club, which as far as we know will exercise the purchase clause agreed upon the loan deal. Valued at seven and a half million euros and he's already informed Benfica of the decision. So, according to this journal, which is now being run with every publication in Scotland, apparently Jota himself has informed Benfica of his decision and that is going to be to join Celtic. Now, I'm going to say it straight away because I don't want to be left with egg on my face should the worst happen. I am touching wood and I am saying I'm not getting my hopes up quite yet. Until there is official word, I am going to be remaining as calm as possible. I'm actually buzzing, to tell you the truth. But I'm going to try, on camera at least, to remain as calm as possible until the deal is done, until there is more to it. Um, but this is very promising news, to say the least. Apparently, the the six and a half million pounds deal, seven and a half million euros, looks to be going through. And it looks as though Jota is happy to stay at the club, knowing that he's not in the plans of Benfica's new manager next season. Benfica will be appointing, I believe, Roger Schmid um, as their new manager um, for the new campaign. And apparently, Benfica and him don't have Jota in the plans. What a sensible move it would be for Jota to come to Celtic, remain in the opportunity of Champions League football, and also build on what has been a fantastic opening to his Celtic career. In regards to my opinion and everything else, I don't need to say much else. It's obvious that Celtic should do everything in their power to get this signing over the line. And if Jota wants it, that makes it even better. It makes it even easier. Um, it's always good when both parties want the same thing. Um, so I think we should be shoving every single penny into that contract that we can afford. And we should be doing our best to make sure he stays at the club. Um... Also, on that note, I don't think it means we should stop looking at Ola Sobakin. If he's still an option for Celtic, he was identified as the kind of contingency plan if Shota wasn't to come to the club. Um, I think we should still look. I think we should still sign as well. Um, if the money is right, if his contract is running out in, in the winter, then why not? But the, the, the priority right now is to make sure we get the Shota transfer over the line. And that'll do it. <laughs> That's basically everything that I have to say. I've given my opinion. I've given the news. Um, I'm hoping for more positive news as the day and the week goes on uh, into the end of the season. It's now that exciting point, isn't it, where we're getting ready for next season, that everything's going to start turning, the wheels are going to be in motion, um, and we're going to see a, a bit of change. Not too much change, of course. I think we've got a really, obviously good unit at the minute but we're going to see those bits and bobs change around the club and I'm looking forward to anything to take us forward and extend um, our lead at the top of the table next season hopefully uh, but for me today that'll do it thank you very much what a day indeed and yeah like and subscribe I'll see you all next time